Hi you guys, welcome back. So along that we're doing for Simplicity 9642. If you're following along in the So Along workbook, this is a free asset that I designed to work in conjunction with the So Along to help you stay organized and stay on track in terms of timing as we make our way through making this project. Um, so without further ado, let's get to the cutting table. All right, so for today's video, we need basically all the components of the dress except for the sleeve and the facings. We are gonna be, for the most part, assembling our dress today um, and going through steps one through seven. A lot of this construction of the dress is the same step repeated. So we have every single piece needs to be stay stitched at the upper edge. Your bodice, your front and back, um, and all of your skirt pieces. So that's the first thing that we're gonna tackle. We're gonna take every single one of these and stay stitch the upper edge of all of them. Let's talk stay stitching. So stay -st stitching is really just when you put a row of stitching just barely to the inside of your um, normal seam allowance because a lot of these pieces um, have this curve and at the curve there are parts of it where your fabric is cut on the bias and it runs the risk of stretching out so to put the stay stitching in just as a little bit of reassurance that it's not going to stretch out at the seam line so what i like to do is set my machine at the normal stitch length which is five eighths or stitch width i should say and then i will move my needle ever so slightly to the right of that, just by a millimeter or so, just to ensure that it's not gonna show when we sew at our regular five eighths, but I can't go too far because then it won't be doing the job that it's supposed to do. And then my stitch length is gonna be pretty small. Um, I'll set it at a 2.5 and you just stitch around this seam. You can back stitch if you want, it's not necessary. And just like that, you have done a stay stitch. The only other important thing to remember with a stay stitch is that you want to start it at, like on your bodice, for example, you start at the shoulder seam and come in toward the center. On your skirts, you're gonna start at the outer seam and come in toward the center. That just ensures that you don't stretch out the fabric while you're putting in the stay stitch. But do all of your pieces, all of your skirts, both bodices, get all of your stay stitching done now. Pieces that are cut on the fold, like our, I think this is the center front panel. Remember, we're starting from the outer edge and coming to the center. So you're gonna start here, come to the center, break your stitches, turn this over, start at the other outer edge and come to the center. All right, so the next task that is kind of on repeat is darting. So we are gonna put a dart in both of the back bodices and we're gonna put a dart in both of the back skirt pieces. So if you transferred your markings as a good student would have, <laughs> then you are pretty much good to go here. Um, if you didn't, then you need to transfer those markings. Um, it's not hard to do. You just um, use a tracing wheel and some like tracing paper like so and transfer the markings over to your pattern piece. You do want to do this on the wrong side so that you can see it um, when you are sewing. All right, in order to pin up your darts to prepare them for sewing, you take your sewing pins and you fold up the dart along the center as best as you can eyeball it. You put a pin in one leg like that and then you flip it over to the other side to see if you've caught the other leg. And I don't know if you can see my yellow markings but I missed it by a mile. So you smoosh the fabric, um, slide the fabric over to where your pin is going through the line on both 
sides. So you can see now mine is, um, and then I will usually go up to the top. If you need more instruction on this, stay stitching, pleating, any of those kinds of things. All of this is covered in heavy, heavy detail in my um, e-course, my Garment Sewing Basics e-course. So I recommend if you need more instruction than what I'm giving here, that you go check that out. But at this point, you'll go to your iron, you'll press this nice and flat, and then you'll sew from here, back stitching, coming across the leg, um, and not back stitching here, but just pulling a thread and tying it off. And because we've pinned where the lines match up front to back, you will ensure that you catch the stitching line on both sides of the dart. All right, moving on to another sewing skill, we are gonna be doing some gathers. And you can see that you're only gathering between the two notches on your uh, bodice, your front bodice piece. So it's only between these two notches here. You should have marked them. And let's head to the machine. Here's one and here's the other one. Let's head to the machine and I'll show you how I gather fabric. All right, so you are gonna set your machine to its longest stitch length and keep it at its regular position, but the needle at its regular position, but you are gonna sew an eighth or a quarter of an inch to the left of your 5 8 seam allowance and an eighth or a quarter to the right of your seam allowance. We're gonna do two rows of stitches, leaving long tails at one end. The other end, we are gonna back stitch. So, setting my needle here for the start of one, and you only have to back stitch a couple stitches. Come down to that other notch, which is right here. And then keep a nice long tail to allow you to pull that um, the thread to create the gather. So now that I've got one nice big seam allowance, I'll do the one that's just to the inside of the 5 8 And again, starting over here and uh, back stitching. And then on the same end where I left the nice long tail on the other one, I'll do the same for this one. All right, and now your fabric is ready to be pulled up using the bobbin threads like so. So we don't know how much we're gonna have to gather this until we get it over to our skirt. So we'll work through that at the table, but beautiful little gathers. Okay, on to the other one. All right, moving right along, we are going to attach our front bodice to our back bodice. And I have been hemming and hawing about how I'm gonna finish my seams. And I think that I'm gonna do French seams on this one. It's time to make a garment that's like leveled up. I mean, of course it's easy just to throw it through your serger and finish the seams that way, but I don't know. I'm feeling like extra special about this one. The fabric is special. My nails match. Like, I don't know. I'm feeling like this one deserves a little bit of extra special attention. So if you've never done French seams before, again, it is in that, um, that e-course that I have. So if you want, you know, really in-depth detail on it, head there. But the quick and dirty of it is you sew it wrong sides together first at a quarter inch seam allowance, then you turn it right side out and stitch it again at 
your three eighths, which equals five eighths. And from there, your seam is finished on the inside. It does look really, really beautiful. Um, and it's just a beautiful way to finish seams. So that's what I'm going to be doing. If you're not doing that, that's fine. Um, just run a stitch through like your normal seam allowance, the five eighths, and then finish it either with pinking shears or zigzag on your sewing machine or run it through your serger. And one thing I want to note, no matter which, no matter how you're finishing your seams, when you match up your shoulder seams, and this might happen other areas too, the big four isn't great about like truing up these corners. So you are gonna have a little bit of a triangle that hangs over. Um, all you wanna make sure is that at this intersection here, that's your five eighths, because all we care about ha what's happening is right here at the intersection of the five eighths seam allowance at the neckline. So if that is at five eighths, then you are good to go no matter what's happening over here on the seam allowances. All right, so shoulder seams. We're also doing side seams. So might as well do those all at once. And also we are gonna be looking at our skirt um, pieces seven and eight, which are the, um, the like little side pieces. <laughs> Not that kind of side piece. <laughs> Um, we have seven and eight here. Seven and eight get put together, matching up the notches. Imagine my seven looks like this. So you're matching up the center front panel like this with the double notch side. And you can't really see this now because I've lifted, I took so much out of my skirt piece, but this is the double notch side, the one without all of the grading on it. So as long as I have that organized, it's the side that has the little funky corner. Okay, oops. So these get placed. And remember, I'm doing mine backwards, wrong sides together, so that I can do um, the French seams. So if you're not doing that, then don't necessarily follow this. Wrong sides together. You're gonna be doing yours right sides together like normal, all right? So this gets sewn on, the other one gets sewn on to the other side, and then we're gonna also sew the skirt back onto this as well. So you're gonna have a whole skirt with a center back seam undone, and you're gonna have a whole bodice with the center back undone. You're also, I forgot to show you, but you're also gonna do this um, center front seam on the front bodices after you get um, the sides and the shoulders done, you're doing this seam as well, just in between the small dot and the big dot. Okay, so head to your machine, sew those, they're just straight stitches, okay? So I'm not gonna show you what I'm doing at my machine because um, I know I'm doing a little, something a little bit funky, um, but just go to your machine, sew these, finish the seams however you want, and I'll meet you back here with a separate bodice and a separate skirt, both open at the center back okay. only. Okay, you wanna see what the French seams look like? It was a good decision, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, it's just, it really does make a difference. And honestly, like after I got in the groove of it, it was fine. It just became very like, you know, it's an extra step of sewing, but it was fine. Okay, so now we are gonna join our skirt to our bodice. We are at step number seven. You are going to take your bodice piece and your skirt piece. And in theory, we're joining them together like this. So you have your large dot of your skirt piece gets matched up with this guy. And obviously you're, you guys are doing this right sides together, um, but I just wanna illustrate it this way because this is like the finished look. The darts in the back should also line up together. So the dart from your bodice and the dart from your skirt should all be in one line. Center back should match. Side seams should also match. And then um, as you get through here, through the, through the gathers, you just wanna make sure your big dot and your notches match up through here and then pull up your gathers to make sure that um, all of that is even and you're gonna do that on both sides since i'm doing french seams yes i'm gonna try and do them on this as well um it might take me some time and be a little bit of a headache but again i do think that it is going to be worth it um the only other thing to note is the pivoting so they want you to come up and sew this 
and pivot at the large dot and then come down here. Sometimes I do find it easier to actually break my stitching, like back stitch and everything, stop, and then completely start over just to make sure your needle is in the right place for the big dot and on your skirt and the big dot on your bodice. So those two things coming together perfectly is what's gonna prevent like a pucker situation. So let me get all this pinned up. I'll take you to the machine and kind of show you how it all comes together. Okay, so I have already stitched one half of mine and you can see kind of how the gathers distribute. Now remember, I'm doing French seams, so mine's gonna be backwards, right? Mine's gonna be wrong side, Mine's gonna be wrong sides together first. Um, but the center backs match, the darts line up, the side seam is the next like monument <laughs> to look for. And then you're gathering up um, the, essentially the bust cup. And then you come through this center front part and I broke my seams. I broke my stitch right at the large dots. So you can see how that looks there. So I'm gonna start right where I stopped. For me, I'm doing the quarter inch first. So I'm gonna start right here. If you're doing normal seams, you're gonna start right where your five eighths seam allowance is. And you're gonna come down this way and sew along the other edge. Oh, the other point I wanna make is I like to put my gathers where they touch the feed dogs because they the feed dogs kind of help distribute them a little bit. Um, other than that, yeah, it's kind of just going for it and say a hope and a prayer. You are going to end up like pulling these things apart a little bit. You might have to, you know, seam rip a little bit and, and do it again, but that's okay. Um, you can get through it. Just take your time. And here we go. Back stitch. Okay. And then... Just follow your seam allowance. As you get to the gathers, reach under here and just make sure everything is kind of, not taut, but at least, you know, sort of taut. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna finish up my, the other part of my French seam off camera and show you the results. Well, you guys, I am, pretty impressed with myself. This is how my little center front turned out um, with the French seams on the inside. Not the most beautiful construction, like I don't think Dior would be hiring me anytime soon, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, again, there's that little pucker there. I could futz with it. I might. We'll just see how the night goes. Um, but after you have gotten to this point, no matter how you are finishing your seams, you're gonna come through here, remove all of your basting threads from the gathering step and just any other rogue threads that you have. And this is where we're gonna stop for today. If you wanna get ahead for tomorrow, um, you can go ahead and finish your center back seams. So if you are using a serger, you just run it through the serger. If you are not, then you're gonna to wanna to do like a little baby hem. I did a little bit of one here on the center back skirt. Um, but you'll just carry this through and just do, like I said, a baby hem all the way up. That way, when we put our zipper in, you know, the zipper is going to be installed like this for better or for worse. This little seam here does not have, or this little raw edge here won't fray on you. It'll be nice and turned under and pretty and hemmed or finished in one way or another. So we basically have a dress sewn. It also is a great time to test this, put it on. See how you did on all of your alterations. If you need to take in at the side seam, sorry, at the side seam, you can do that. Um, you can also take in from the center back if you want, but make sure that this seam has to be straight um, because that's where your zipper is going. So that has to be a perfectly straight line. Um, okay, so that, that does it. I really like her. She's really coming together really well. The next video is inserting the zipper and attaching, making, installing the facing. So I'll meet you back here for that.